Here's a little secret piece of information about me. I have an internal mental buffer, and it fills up ever so much whenever someone mentions using an amateur radio or any radio without a license for that service during an emergency. We'll hear things like, oh, during an emergency, you can use anything you want, any radio, any service, whatever, and it's totally fine. And that extends to people even making the claim that in a state of emergency, you can use any radio service, any radio you want, etc., etc. Those in particular cause the buffer to get a little bit fuller. I found that that buffer uh, reaches the top and then overflows mm, about once a year. And that's why we're making today's video. Last year, I did a really cool video with Tony DeWitt transmit without license during an emergency, save life and property, question mark. This happened about the time that there was somebody who got slapped with an incredibly large fine after they illegally transmitted on the voice communication frequency for some helicopters that were dropping water or, you know, fire retardant type stuff or fire extinguishing type stuff. They got slapped with a massive fine because they were illegally transmitting. Now, I, I think the, the crux of all this really breaks down into two things. And believe me, we're going to go into much further than two things. But uh, it's pretty deep enough that we got to start at least from the beginning. And, and hold on, don't, don't run away. We're not going to spend much time looking at the FCC type acceptance rules for, for different radio services. But here is 97.403 and 405 specifically pertaining to safety of life and protection of property and also calling May Day on the frequency. By the way, you can you can do this legal breakdown if you want to on all the FCC rules, not just applying to amateur radio, but GMRS, FRS, CB, you name it. So if you pull up the document, Safety of life and protection of property. No provision of these rules basically saying we make no rule about this. The use of an amateur station of any means, any means of radio communication at its disposal to provide essential communication needs in connection with the immediate safety of human life and immediate protection of property when normal communication systems are not available. That means you could stumble upon an amateur set. Maybe it's in a car. Maybe it's on a person and there's a legitimate emergency happening. You pick it up. You use that station to talk to another amateur radio licensed individual. They reply to you. You seek the medical care or assistance of first responders that you need. That assumes that you have exhausted normal communication systems. What does that mean? Well, at the time this was written, who knows? But uh, now it means a cell phone, something that you have the lawful ability to use. You'd have to try that first. I do make one little exception here. If you stumble upon a police officer and they're like down and, and they're they're shot or they're having a medical episode that you think is like seconds is, is going to be the difference between life and death, then, yeah, maybe I'll grab that radio first, right? I don't know. That, that, that's going to depend on the situation. I may just grab his hand mic and say, look, I got a radio. I've got an officer down. Hopefully you guys are triangulating this or you have the ability to location find. Uh, my call sign's Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. I'm at corner of such and such. Come here. At the same time, I could be doing 911, right? I could push 911, wait for that call to go through. I could be operating simultaneously to the best of my ability. Eh, realistically, that's probably a little bit too superhero-ish of a radio operator, probably beyond my capabilities. But it continues. 97.405, station in distress. So this is almost like your Mayday station. Not exactly, but similar concept. So a, a lot of this is going to say provision of these rules, meaning we're not making a rule that supersedes this rule that an amateur station in distress of any means at its disposal to attract attention, make known its condition and location, and obtain assistance. Now, paragraph B of that basically just extends this to the use by a station in the exceptional circumstances described in paragraph A of this section of any means of radio communication at its disposal to assist a station in distress. So it goes both ways. If you can have a license, call distress, and someone that doesn't have a license can resp reply or you have a you have a license and you respond to somebody that doesn't have a license in their case of a distress right or or anyone that finds a radio right Okay, I think everything I just said makes complete sense, and that's not where we run into the people that are filling my buffer up with with this kind of repeated 
myth, right? I think that there's a lot of people out there that just want to carry a radio like this. It's a bit whackerish um, in the sense that you want to carry a radio and not have an amateur license, and you're looking for any reason to justify you doing that. That's what I think a lot of people who repeat this phrase often are, are banking on, that, oh, yeah, in an emergency, I can just use this radio, and I can be a radio operator, or I can use it you know, to, to communicate with my friends, my people, my, my whatever. And that's often where we get this second writer, this add-on thing that a lot of people say of, oh, well, in the case of a state emergency, I can just use any radio I want. Uh, the reality is, is that's not really the case. And the problem with that instance is during an emergency, lots of things get set up like the hurricane watch net, the firefighter net or the wildfire net for here in Southern California. There are these frequency spaces that are going to be allocated for the use of, you know, emergency professionals and just hams that are passing information around that they don't want you on. And the fact that you stumble into it, kind of not having any understanding really of what this is, you become more of an obstacle in being able to effectively have communication work. The other problem is, is if you've spent all this time just not getting licensed, walking around carrying this radio then by and large, you probably don't understand how to effectively operate the radio to begin with. And that's really my big issue with all of this. I think nobody has a misunderstanding of what a true emergency is where you should pick up a radio and communicate. But I think a lot of people do the mental gymnastics required to come up with an excuse why they can carry a radio of any type, whether it's a first responder radio. Maybe it's 100% devoted to listening, but yeah, I, I do have a couple of those frequencies loaded that if I, you know, if there was an emergency, I could I could key up and transmit. I think there's something about our human brain that that makes it okay. We 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 try and find reasons why it's okay to illegally transmit in this case. Illegal is the question, right? Is it truly illegal? Well, if you stumble upon an officer and they're down and they're hurt and you call for help on their radio or you use another radio or whatever, likely no, it's not a, a true problem. You're not breaking the law. Again, and that comes down to the simple fact that I think we all have an understanding of what a super dire situation is of an emergency. The problem is when you start getting further away from a dire situation. If you are a group of hikers and you someone falls, none of your cell phones work, and none of you are amateur radio licensed, and one guy is Karen or Baofeng, could you use it? Yeah, probably. That's probably dire enough that you could do that, right? If and however there is further away from the dire situation of, oh, my neighbor's house is on fire, uh, should I use amateur radio or should I key up on the firefighter frequency to seek help? Probably not. That's probably not acceptable. And there's going to be varying differences on that depending on the little minute details of that. And again, I'm not a lawyer and don't take this as you know legal advice, but this is the common everyman the jury of your peers, if you will, uh, kind of responding to this. If you're truly worried about being out in the middle of nowhere and being able to communicate when you don't have a cell phone, consider something like a personal locator beacon or PLB. There's a number of companies that make them. And obviously there are other devices like the Garmin InReach. I will post links in the description to things that are actually really, really effective when you are out of cell phone range. And I know there's a lot of you that are worried about that kind of stuff. So just consider getting a personal beacon of some kind instead of carrying around an amateur radio if you're not planning on getting licensed. Okay, Josh, so we get it. You're not supposed to use a radio in these pseudo emergencies that don't really exist and you should go get your license, right? Well, what if you have your license and you are interested in participating in some kind of effective emergency communication? This is over at the American Radio Relay League. What do amateur radios do during and after disasters? Amateur radio operators set up and operate organized communication networks locally for government and emergency officials, as well as non-commercial communications for private citizens affected by the disasters. We'll break that down in a second. 
Amateur radio operators are most likely to be active after disasters that damage regular lines of communication due to the power outages and destruction of telephone, cellular, and other infrastructure dependent systems. But an important note here is that when amateur radios team up with the local community, the local government and emergency officials, they're generally working at the behest of the government and emergency officials, and there are strict rules that they follow. There are groups called ARIES, Amateur Radio Emergency Service, and RACES, the Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service. Those are two groups that organize hams that can work together after an emergency. Now, what's kind of funny about this, and, and we're going to wrap up the video on this because we're going to take a hard right turn right now. So hopefully you've wrote down all your notes and you've committed to memory everything I've talked about. Ham radio, big community, lots of people, lots of big opinions. And guess what? There are people that are in our community that uh, don't like emergency communications for amateur radio. And here's one of them. When are we going to embrace ham radio as just a hobby? There are still droves of do-gooders dr being drawn to ham radio thinking they will play an active role in the preservation of human life when a disaster occurs. I don't deny that hams have and will continue to play impactful roles in these situations, but not in the heroic ways they are being led to believe, and I will post a link to this as well. Now, there's a lot of truth in this, believe it or not, and, and don't expect to come to me and think that I'm going to jump to you know the defense of every potential radio emergency situation that hams are the solution to that problem. The reality is, is that technology has improved immensely, and there are a number of communication services and devices, equipment, infrastructure, etc., that are available to first responders that make amateur radio less effective or less important than it used to be with regards to certain emergencies. Does that get rid of amateur radio from the emergency scene entirely? No, of course not. But it's important to keep in mind that we are first radio amateurs that should be doing radio for maybe other reasons. The first and foremost reason shouldn't necessarily revolve around emergency communication, although fun and helpful in some rarer situations. Now, I think it should be said that uh, there is room at the table, the ham table, for all participants of amateur radio and those that are interested in our hobby. And yes, there is still a service component to our hobby. Things have changed a bit with regards to emergency communication from my point of view. With that said, everything that I've mentioned beforehand, if you are, if you find yourself on the air and someone's calling for help, if you are uh, relaying information for your local community, all of that stuff is incredibly valuable. Although I think for most hams, it's going to be a rare situation. You may live in an area where a lot of emergencies take place. I find myself in an area where there are emergencies, but not ones that really ham radio would be deployed for or asked to participate in. We already have good infrastructure that handles those emergencies fine enough. And I think the reply here uh, sums it up pretty well by Al Binger. Dunno, dude. I spent many a hot and sweaty day working comms for a Red Cross shelter, relaying messages between local and county police, ELMS, EMTs, fire and community leaders when flooding took down cell and countrywide FM infrastructure during the 500-year flooding in Cedar Rapids. I remember that. It was everything our regular do-nothing weekly nets and public events comms support trained us for. None of us were doing more than drinking water, being helpful, and relaying info. It doesn't have to be the end of the world to be considerably more than a hobby. It is a good hobby, too. Now, see, that's the most important reply to all of this in that at the end of the day, everything we do as hams with our license you, on nets or exchanging information, the way we make contacts with people on HF is helpful for use in emergencies. Now... I still would encourage you, if you are interested in this, to find your local Aries or Racies group and get involved that way because there, of course, is going to be process differences and training that you will need to take. Again, you can't just walk into an emergency situation and expect that, oh, it's time. I'm going to be now helping out. I'm a ham. I'm ready to help. Now, right. specifically for the folks that say, well, in a state emergency or a state of emergency, aren't I allowed to just use whatever I want? No, <laughs> no, you're not. And the reason is pretty simple is while the state around you may be in an emergency and an emergency could be likely, the immediacy of threat to life is probably not met in those situations. 
Plus, you likely also have communication services at your availability that you could use instead and are actually required to use first. I got a lot of this when we were like in the middle of COVID. A lot of people were dumbfounded that they couldn't just use the amateur radio during COVID. And I, I kind of wanted to tell them, it's like, God, most of us are just like hanging out in, uh, in, in our homes, you know, hoarding paper towels and toilet paper. Why Why would you expect that you could just get on the air and start talking to people? What is so important about your situation that would require you immediately getting on the air? And and most of the time I was, I was met with crickets and no replies to my comments. Uh, because, yeah, you, you really need to be in the process of having an emergency to need a radio if you're not licensed. And lastly, and here's my last comments on this. I encourage, obviously, I encourage you to go get your license. It's an amazing hobby. But even if it's something that you're just going to kind of put on a shelf and it's not really going to be that important to your daily life, if you're not going to make a hobby out of it, like I obviously have and many other people have too, you probably still should consider just getting your technician license and participating occasionally in an on-the-air net. That is going to give you the training you need for free, right, aside from the cost of your license and maybe a Baofeng, to understand what actual radio communication looks like. And you're going to need that experience if and when an emergency happens. Expecting that you're just going to be able to pick up your Baofeng, it's going to be programmed to this magic frequency that listens to all emergency responders and everybody can hear you every time you use it, is probably not accurate. And if anything, a security blanket that really only helps to make you feel like you're prepared for an emergency when you're really not. I post links to all the things that I've mentioned in this video as well as a couple of my emergency preparedness videos. If you are curious about being a ham, I will also post links to getting licensed here in the current age of amateur radio, which which I think is just an amazing time to be a ham. There's so many cool things going on. I am Josh KI6NAZ. If you found this helpful, please consider subscribing. And until I talk to you again, 73.